Hi, it's Chris Yang here, and today I'm gonna make my go-to, every day, always in the freezer, never fails me, years of trial and error, pork dumplings. Here at the Major Domo TV studio in Los Angeles, I try to keep the freezer stocked with dumplings so that if we don't have time to make staff meal, there's always dumplings that we can throw into some boiling water and have a quick staff meal. The same thing goes at home. Man, we use them so often because so often I just don't have energy to make dinner. And so having frozen dumplings is always a, a plus for me. So uh, you can make dumplings 750 million different ways. You can do anything, you can add whatever proteins, although don't use chicken. Uh, just kidding, chicken dumplings are fine. Uh, but this is just sort of like the dumpling I make most often because I always have these ingredients. It's a crowd pleaser, my kids go for it, everybody likes it, there's nothing crazy in it, but you can always accouter it and I'll show you how to do that too. So uh, to start, we always have ground pork at home, ginger, an egg, uh, we always have cilantro in the fridge and I'm just gonna be using the stems for this. You could use any any sort of herb you wanna put in this thing. The other thing I'll, I really love is to have garlic chives, which if I go to the Asian market, then I will always pick those up. We don't have any today, so I'm going with this. Dumplings are also an incredibly good way of sneakily integrating some healthy greens into your children's diet. So sometimes I'll put frozen spinach, sometimes you'll chop up a little cabbage. If you use cabbage, what's important is to control the sort of water content uh, and salt it and squeeze out as much water as you can first. Anyway, seasoning wise, what we're gonna have for our dumplings uh, is a little MSG. You don't have to if you don't have it, doesn't matter. Uh, Cornstarch, which sort of acts in the same way as breadcrumbs would in a, a meatball, you know, panade or whatever, or meatloaf or a meatball, you know, it kind of like has that tenderizing effect and sort of keeps the juices from just spilling out everywhere. Uh, a little sesame oil, a little soy sauce, a little bit of sugar in the form of agave here. You can use granulated sugar, it doesn't matter. And then a little white pepper. And uh, I throw some hoisin sauce into my dumplings. But if you don't have this, really, you're just looking for some kind of sauce, literally anything that has a little sweetness, a lot of umami, a little viscosity, uh, just, you know, toicing is sort of perfect to me for, to me because it's like I said, it's a little sweet, has tons of umami. Uh, it's not going to bring too much moisture to the party. You could use oyster sauce. Uh, you could use any number of different things. Honestly, honestly, in a pinch, probably put a little barbecue sauce into your, into your dumplings, but don't tell them I told you that. 90% of dumpling making is just folding. This part is just mixing and squishing together. So toss your ground pork in there. Make sure you keep the meat diaper out of there. Crack your egg. About a tablespoon, I would say, of cornstarch. Yeah, let's call it two teaspoons. A little sugar. You don't want a, a lot. You just you. This is this is like a real a real act of balance. You want a little sweetness. Dave always says. Chang always says. You want just as much sweetness or just enough acidity that you don't taste it. Which sounds insane if you if you if you don't stop and think about it. But he's right. You just want it to be there. But if you start tasting, if your first reaction when you eat a dumpling is, oh, that was sweet. Maybe one of the worst <laughs> forms of feedback you get. I would say. Tablespoon of hoisin sauce, a couple teaspoons of soy sauce, a little Cajun sparkle, MSG. Um, just like the scantest little bloop bloop of toasted sesame oil, a little bit of white pepper. Like I don't put a lot because white pepper is actually pretty spicy. I think I put everything in there, a little salt. And we're gonna, we're gonna, once we, once we've mixed this, we're gonna taste it for seasoning and check it for seasoning. Uh, but before that, I'm gonna get a little bit of ginger. 
Obviously, you could use a microplane to do this, which when I say obviously, really, I mean, why didn't I use a microplane to do this? Because this sure is annoying. Ginger. And then this is the best use of cilantro stems to me is into dumplings. Because you, I love the flavor of cilantro and I love that you get this sort of like really concentrated version of the sort of coriander flavor in the stem. And it's much easier to integrate this than it is the leaves. And you kind of want to, I, you know, you want to reserve the leaves for something a little more delicate, like a garnish. And the stem is just such a perfect thing for soups or stuff like this, dumpling filling. Cilantro stem has sort of become the kind of the uh, defining flavor of the dumplings in my house is this little cilantro stem flavor. Again, don't use cilantro if you don't like cilantro, but you do need some kind of little element of, of green herbal freshness. So cabbage that you've salted and then you squeeze out the liquid from cabbage is great in this totally traditional you could also throw um, garlic chives in as i said scallion greens and whites totally valid as well freaking chives whatever you want don't do rosemary seriously and then like i said you can also you can you can screw around with this but the basic formula is a bunch of umami some salt a little sweetness cornstarch protein you could use you can throw shrimp in here too, which we do whenever we have shrimp on hand. Um, uh, you know, you can do chicken, you can do pork, you can do lamb, which my mom hates. Um, but you can go anywhere. But this is this is the utility dumpling, and then this is the part that really gets me going. Uh, if it, if it's feeling a little too <laughs> wet, uh, cornstarch will dry you right out. Uh, these are my mixers, by the way. That's how you mix this thing. All right, that's our filling. I'm going to microwave a little taster. 20 seconds, full power. You just wanna, you just wanna be able to taste it. Hmm. Hmm. So that's a lot of umami. The cilantro is really nice and fresh in there. I get a little white pepper at the very end. That's basically spot on uh if i were serving these totally nude i might do a little i'm gonna do a tiny bit more salt but i'm also keeping in mind that when i'm serving these i'm generally serving them with a little dipping sauce on the side which is gonna have a lot of salt so these don't have to be super super seasoned or they don't have to carry all of the seasoning duty themselves but that's per basically perfect so Next, I'm going to set up my folding station. So you have your filling, you get your wrappers. Uh, so here's the thing. One pound of pork, one pound of pork filling is not enough for that stack of wrappers. I screwed up. You really need like, this is probably one and a half pounds of pork to, to use all of these wrappers. You need a bowl of water to dip your fingers in to seal the dumplings. Now what happens really is I take this and I go sit in front of the TV <laughs> and this whole portable dumpling folding station comes with me. And it's just a little happy screen time for, for Baba over here. I get to fold dumplings and watch TV. Uh, so nothing to it. A little less filling than you think you need. The worst thing you can do is overfill these. You're gonna go around half of the dumpling with water. You're gonna fold it over. So I use this finger to wet, and the, the, from here on out, I don't wanna get the rest of the dumpling super wet. So then I use these two fingers to sort of pinch all around, making sure I'm getting out any air pockets. It's really important that this, is, this seal is tight. You don't want these things bursting in the water. Uh, next, one more little bit of water. You got this little crescent shape right here on this little flap, this ear. And then you're gonna bring this one, you're gonna crunch it together and bring this one in front of the other and pinch. And look at that, you got like a, just a very cute little dumper. And that's it. So you're gonna do that 
whatever, 80 times. Just keep on going. You gotta get in a rhythm here. Uh, actually, the smartest thing you can do, if you're not doing this in front of the TV and you're doing this at a proper station like this, the smartest thing you can do is break the steps down into stages, right? It's an assembly line. So first I'm gonna put meat on everything so I'm not reaching back over. This is like a real, this is how people work in, this is how professional kitchens work is you don't you don't break a tab. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna dice 20 onions, you don't dice one and then dice another and then dice another. You do all of your slices one way, then you move them aside. You do one move at a time and that's just gonna save you a lot of gestures, right? Like picking up the spoon, putting the spoon back, all of that kind of thing. Uh, so I like to, if I have a bunch of room to work with, I will work in batches of whatever, 10 dumplings at a time. Here's the, here's the annoying thing about this. This is, I love dumplings so much and I like making them a lot. I don't mind the work of folding them, although it is a pain in the butt, but here's the crazy thing. My son, my three-year-old son, Keith, only wants the filling inside the dumpling. He doesn't like the wrapper for some reason. Uh, and you at home are saying, well, what's the big deal? Then just like make him, that's easier for you. Just make some meatballs and, and cook the meatballs. No, no, Baba. They have to be cooked in the dumpling and I have to meticulously wrap them, cook them, and then peel the skin off the dumpling so he can eat the inside of it. You know who would not do that? My dad. <laughs> I don't trust anybody to fold my dumplings. Even my own daughter, who asks all the time if she can help. And I say, you can do this one. And then I keep it on the side. My primary thought as I'm doing this always is just, is just to make sure I'm getting a good seal all the way around and not getting any air bubbles in there. Because that's just going to cause them to burst open and all your dumpling water to go bad. So I want like a full centimeter all the way around the sides here. Um, so that's what I'm looking for with these dumplings. And then the other thing, the other place it can go wrong is with this last little fold. So I'll show you again. You hold it toward yourself, and then this one is going to go behind this one. And for some reason that trips people up. But this is the important thing is like squeezing this really tight is important. And these are these these wrappers are pretty resilient. Okay. I've folded all these. I'm going to show you how to make a few of these and then we're going to freeze the rest. And I'm going to talk about that too. So I actually don't necessarily want the water to be at a ripping boil. I kind of want to just keep it at a steady simmer throughout the cooking. Uh, because I don't want these little delicate coin purses to fall apart. So I'm going to do, let's see, it's five. Six, seven, eight. Let's do about 16 of them. It's probably gonna take about five, six minutes of just sort of simmering. Meanwhile, you can do a couple of things here as for the rest of your dumplings. Maybe you're having a big family dinner party Key party maybe, and you're, uh, you can cook them all at once or you can freeze them. Dumplings freeze extraordinarily well. You can cook them straight out of the freezer and they will be delicious for months and months and months. You can either par cook them or you can cook them fully and then sort of put them on a, a tray to, or a, a rack to drip and then freeze them that way. That's what Dave Chang prefers. I don't do that. I just stick this whole tray flat into the freezer on parchment and, until they're frozen and hard and then into Ziploc bags and that's it. So these are gonna boil. In the meantime, I'm gonna make one super easy sauce and then we're gonna dress the rest in sort of a more complicated way. For the super easy sauce, like it really could not get simpler than this. You're gonna blink and you're gonna miss it. Uh, vinegar is the base of the sauce more than soy sauce. I think that just dipping your dumplings in soy sauce is a mistake. You really are looking for vinegar first. So um, I would say maybe two parts rice vinegar to one part 
soy sauce, and one part agave. So you can use sugar, but if you use sugar, you gotta throw this in the microwave to heat it up and dissolve it. Agave means that when the kids are sitting at the table screaming bloody murder, I can have sauce, uh, just like one little couple drops of toasted sesame oil. Uh, means I can have this on the table in five seconds. And that's like as basic a utility dumpling sauce as you can get. It's, you know, that is the flavor of the sauce you're gonna get when you buy dumplings at Costco from the freezer section, you get those Ling Lings. That's what that's gonna taste like. It's gonna taste like the dumpling sauce at every, or gyoza sauce at every Japanese restaurant. It's just sweet, a little sesame, and nice and tart with the, the vinegar. For the rest of these, I'm gonna do, I had, I had the ingredients. So we're gonna do the rest of these in sort of a more, a classic Sichuan style, uh, known as Hongyo Taoso which is like the, you'll, you'll see them at every Sichuan restaurant. It's like uh, red oil dumplings. It's basically tingly from Sichuan peppercorn, spicy from chili oil, a, a good amount of sugar, and then basically the rest of the same ingredients, a little, a little herb with cilantro and, and scallion, but I'll dress the rest of them like that. So there's not a lot of specific things you're looking for with these. As a general thing, they're gonna float <laughs> when they're done. Think of dumpling wrappers as fresh pasta, which it is. Doesn't take that long to cook fresh pasta. And I cooked these from fresh. So like I said, four or five minutes to be done. If I'm cooking them out of the freezer, that's when I'm really trying to make sure I'm keeping the temp low so they're not getting blown out. The dump, the wrappers aren't falling apart or anything. It's going to take another extra couple of minutes for the filling to cook. But these are just about done. They're floating. You can feel they're firm and bouncy. No reason why I have to do this in mortar and pestle except that the mortar and pestle is here. So I'm gonna use it. If you've never had Sichuan peppercorn, it is one of the most unique ingredients in the world. Um, it has a, in Chinese we call it hua jiao, and it's got, it's described as numbing, a numbing sensation, but it's really sort of more of a tingle on your tongue. And the, the idea is that this quote unquote numbing sensation goes hand in hand with spice. So that sensation is known as ma, and spice is known as la, so it's ma la. And so it's almost like the idea is this kind of balance of, oh, that's really spicy, but now the peppercorn kind of numbs my tongue and allows me to eat more spicy. So like that's what, like that sort of tension, that kind of feedback loop is the basis for a lot of delicious things in Sichuan cooking. Um, but yeah, all right, so these are done. You can also sort of see, this is a, a little bit of a thing, not necessarily a test that I'm gonna recommend you follow. Um, but you can see, like a little bit of oil on the top of this water, which basically all that indicates to me is that this meat inside has rendered fat and some of it is escaping. So at least I know that that has happened. <laughs> you know, the meat is cooked or, you know, mostly cooked. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna drain these dumplings in my very full sink into my bowl here. Again, I would use I would probably, at home, I'd probably use Chinese black vinegar, but this is probably more common rice vinegar. Um, a little bit of sesame, a little soy. And then this is a, a big, this is gonna make you jealous. If you guys are, if you all are Momofuku fans, which I assume a lot of you are, this is like, an extra large portion of chili crunch, which you cannot buy, which we were gifted by Major Domo, the restaurant. Um, and I'm just gonna harvest some of this chili oil, but you can use whatever chili oil you have on hand for this. That's the hongyo, the, the red oil. And that's gonna be my 
dressing. Need some more salt. Thank God. Very spicy. Um, all right. Now, last bit of this is a good amount of sugar. I really like this sort of sugar in the raw, bigger chunks of sugar if you have it, but I don't have it. So just regular granulated sugar is fine. And then a little bit of scallion. This scallion looks ridiculous because it was frozen a minute ago, which is why it's all flat and flabby. But not to worry all taste the same and then a couple of little cilantro leaves toss 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 and one more little hit of sugar crucial 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 ingredient is sichuan peppercorn crushed up sprinkled on there for that numbing, tingling sensation that is great in your mouth, but if you feel it anywhere else, you should really call your doctor immediately. And there you have it. That's basically two different ways to serve the same dumpling. To review, there are 70 million different ways you can serve dumplings, make dumplings, fill dumplings, fold dumplings. This is just the one that I do most often at home. This is the one that my kids are used to, the one that kids and adults both like. It is utilizing ingredients I always have on hand. I always have dumpling wrappers in the freezer. I always have ground pork in the freezer. I almost always have cilantro in the fridge. And then all of my seasonings are just total staples, at least in my house. So this is a pork dumpling. It's not the number one. It's just the one I use all the time. The utility makes everybody happy dumpling done with a simple, simple, simple soy vinegar, sesame, sugar sauce, and dressed up a little bit as a Sichuan Hongyo Chao So. I know what these taste like. They taste delicious. This is the regular old simple sauce. So like I said, this seasoning is gonna combine with that seasoning, so you don't have to overdo with that one. This is my preferred version, honestly. Simple, 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 simple sauce. They call me, they call me Simple Chris. And this is the Sichuan Hongyo Chao So. Which, weirdly enough, this is the one my wife likes more. My white wife likes this a lot more. She might just be more Chinese than me. So there it is. That's two. I did two dumplings for you today. My voice got really high. Oh, geez. Um, thank you as always for following on. I really hope that you cook this recipe. I've been making it for years and years and years. I wanna hear about what you put in your dumplings, what makes your dumplings tick. Why did I touch my belly? Um, so comment below, very nice things about me and very personal stories from you. Uh, hit that like button if you don't mind, and please subscribe. We're just sitting here watching that subscriber count, praying for it to go up, uh, lest we all die. Uh, thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon.